Hi, welcome to Blindside Movie Reviews on WGWG, online WGWG.org. I'm Noel T. Manning II, coming to you from Boiling Springs, North Carolina, hanging out with the original blind movie critic Jay Forey from, uh, it's a Wesley Chapel, Florida. Is that where you are, my friend? Well, you've never heard of Wesley Chapel? <laughs> Man, I, that's almost, uh, I think that might be bigger than Boiling Springs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it, if you've got the chapel in the name, that means you're doing a lot of praying down there. So uh, make sure that uh, that you do that, Jay. Make sure you <laughs> okay, do it. Okay, yeah, I, I, I had to after after Baywatch this uh, week. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, Jay is the original blind movie critic. We've been doing this show together since 1999. <laughs> Uh, Jay, yeah, this weekend, you know, uh, movies that relate to the ocean. You got Baywatch. That's right. The uh, the the film version, the feature film version um, of the uh, TV series that lasted forever. Uh, we got uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, uh, Zac Efron, and many many more uh, showing up on the beaches trying to save people in uh, a comedy. You know, the, the 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 TV series was not meant to be a comedy, but it was pretty funny at times. Uh, my father in law, I'm gonna I'm gonna. <laughs> Tell a little secret on him. He used to watch it. He called it Babe Watch. He liked to watch the babes. So that was uh, that was him. <laughs> oh, you know, and I used to call him the Baywatch boobs. So, uh, <laughs> oh my gosh! I'm not right. sure why, but I <laughs> and you know, I never saw the show. Yeah, yeah. It was on from 2000. I mean, 1989 to 2001. It was the longest running show that never won an Emmy. I don't right. understand why. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, Jay got to hang out with one of the uh, Baywatch babes uh, several years ago when you were on a TV show called "To Tell the Truth." Uh, we're not going to go into that, but but in a short story is is Jay hugged her and she got so disgusted she she went and showered right afterwards. Uh, is that is that truth? Is that fact or fiction? Well, here's the thing. Somebody actually said that when when I when uh, I told them that I got a hug from Brooke Burns, and they go, uh, "You probably didn't take a shower after that uh, after that hug for three months." And I said, "No." On the other hand, probably the other way around, she had to take a shower afterwards because I wouldn't let her go. So. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> I don't know if it's true or not, oh, but it's it a funny story. There you go. Well, we we uh, we're not going to talk about uh, about Baywatch the movie anymore, uh, but you did get a chance to check out. The uh, newest installment of Pirates of the Caribbean, and we'll also talk about Roger Moore before we wrap up the show. But let's uh, dive right into the review of this fifth installment um, of the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. This is Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man Tell No Tells. Uh, the franchise has been around since 2003 uh, when we first saw Johnny Depp uh, as Jack Sparrow uh, in the uh, film called The Curse of the Black Pearl. We've had uh, three others Dead Man's Chest, At World's End, and then 2011. On Stranger Tides. And now, six years later, we've got yet, yet another installment, Dead Man Tell No Tales. Yes, and um, this is, uh, <laughs> honestly, it's more of the same. Uh, it, it's, uh, you, in this film, uh, J- J- Jack Sparrow teams up with, actually, this is kind of actually one of the, new, the only new thing here, with Henry Turner, which is Orlando Bloom and Karen Knightley's son is in this film, so that's how long it's been around. Teams up with him to find the trident of uh, Poseidon to, uh, because there he's trying to battle uh, a bad guy, Captain Slazer. And that that's what it's all about. Actually, in some other <laughs> yeah. countries, Captain Slazer. I'm sorry? Yeah, I'm, I'm just laughing at you because it's like, yeah, that's the story. There's not much more to it than that. Exactly. That is the story. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and they're written, it's all about, you know, pirates, sword fights, uh, we have a ghost ship, ghost sharks. I mean, that's what we have in, in every film. Yep, yep. Now, is this a bad film? Well, it's convoluted, yes, uh, but it's, it's so fast-paced, something going on all the time. It's fun, it's entertaining. It's a popcorn flick, and that's what these Pirates of the Caribbean films are all about. Yeah, I, I think that's exactly right. You're not going into this for something new, uh, just like when you go to watch Fast and the Furious films, you know exactly what you're looking for. Although they did find a way to kind of reinvent that franchise a few films back, I don't think that that's happening with this. I mean, you 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 know you're seeing, you know you're seeing uh, you're seeing dead pirates come back to life, and yeah. and all of them have some kind of beef with Jack Sparrow for some reason, um, and uh, you know that's not anything new. Uh, so if anybody goes into this expecting something brand new from this, uh, you, you, you know you're not thinking too clearly. <laughs> <laughs> this, exactly. This, this movie, a, it is what it is, and uh, it, like you said, it's a popcorn flick. 
And here's the thing. The Parks of the Caribbean fans, they loved it. Yep. I mean, wow, well, you know, but the people who aren't fans, uh, you know, what, why are we doing this again? And, uh, I mean, not that they disliked it, but uh, one of the, uh, the good things about this film, well, two things. One, it's two hours. It's the shortest part of the Caribbean film, which, you know, three and four were just off the charts, just right, too long. Right, you know? right, right. And one was almost three hours. I, I, why are they doing this, you know? And, um, and then the second thing, there's no cliffhanger here, which they did in some of the other ones, leading to that maybe this is the end. So I don't know. And one last thing I have to mention, all you Pirates of the Caribbean fans, stay. And I actually was, I didn't find this out from, um, from uh, the, the studio, but there's an after-the-credit scene, which I don't remember any of them before in any of the part. At the very, very rent, there's a very humorous, I mean, it's when the credits are totally done. Okay. So you have to stay an extra five minutes for that, but it's, it's worth it. Okay. And uh, ah, fun film. You know, it's good for this summer. Go check it out. Definitely, if you're a fan. If not, you're looking for something to do. Yeah, check okay. it out. I'm I'm going to give it a B minus okay. rating. I, and no, before I let you go, um, this uh, in my and I want to hear what you say. Uh, my, of course, the first one's the best. Second, next, three and four. Um, yeah, you know, not not too great. But this actually rated kind of in the middle of all. You know. All of them, so that's okay. actually not too bad. Well, good deal, yeah. Um, I mean, I thought I loved the first one. I absolutely loved the first yeah. one, and it was just incredibly creative. And the others, Magical. you know, found ways to forward the story, but it didn't do much more than that. I, I was talking with uh, with Jeff Powell recently, and, and honestly, if you if you ask me kind of the storyline of the uh, all the ones in the middle, I don't know that I could tell you all the storylines. Right. I'd, I'd have to go back and watch them again. Um, to find out. And I do have those films, and I could probably do that. Maybe I'll do right. that uh, over the next couple of days so I can be caught up again. Right. B-minus for Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men, Tell No Tales, uh, in theaters now, uh, Jay's website, blindsidereviews.com. Give us that rating system, Jay, before we talk about Roger Moore. Yes, A, it's so good blind people like it. B, I'm glad I could hear it. C, I had one eye open. D, I'm glad I couldn't see it. And F, Blindness is a blessing. Yep, Sir Roger Moore, uh, he passed away uh, this week at the age of 89. Uh, many people know him uh, as, as former James Bond. He was James Bond for seven films. And before that, he was also another kind of a secret agent. Uh, he played the saint on television for uh, seven years as well. Uh, so, Jay, let's get your thoughts on uh, on Roger Moore, uh, the first James Bond I ever saw in theaters. Yeah, I guess you and me, I'm, I'm older than you, but it's still, I agree, I'm the same thing for me. He began in 73 and went to uh, 90... Uh, eight, to, 85, 85. Uh, it's 85, okay. Yep. Um, and so, you're right, that was around our time when we started going to movies and stuff like that. So I don't remember Sean Connery, uh, well, I'm, I'm just going back, but uh, yeah, so by far, he was my favorite James Bond, still is. You know, I actually got to see him, got to see several of you, and after them, I didn't lose my sight till later. My favorite James Bond by far, and uh, I, I don't know why no one can compare to him. And, uh, you know, one of the things I was talking to a host over in the United Kingdom, and he said, hey, Roger Moore used to kind of make fun of himself because he was 50 years old when he was doing James He said, I'm a, I'm a secret agent that's 50 years old. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he kind of made fun of himself yeah, for that. Yeah, so. yeah. Great, great guy, great actor, a lot of fun, um, and there's some great quotes by him if you want to check it out. My favorite James Bond film with Roger Moore was Live and Let Die. Uh, you have a favorite? Live and Let Die. Okay, that's yours too. All right, uh, Jay, uh, we appreciate it as always. Your uh, website, blindsidereviews.com, and uh, we, uh, we love this as always. Thanks for your time. Till next time, I'm Noel Manning. That's Jay Forey for Blindside Movie Reviews. That is a wrap. <laughs>